Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Satyanarayan Rao and in this video we will understand a concept called as Canonical Correspondence Analysis or in short CCA. Canonical Correspondence Analysis is a statistical tool that helps us understand how multiple variables interact in a complex system and in this video we are going to take an ecological system as an example. So unlike a Pearson coefficient, the correlation coefficient that we normally see in a lot of publications, the R square score, which actually simply measures the connection between two variables and we get a correlation coefficient. The canonical correspondence analysis allows us to actually explore more detailed intricate relationship that may exist among various combinations of variables that are of interest. So, for example, if we consider a plant as an example, the plant growth and the plant health is not just affected by soil moisture, but also by factors such as soil temperature, sunlight exposure, nutrient levels and even interactions with other microorganisms uh, in, in the ecosystem in which the plant is living. So canonical correspondence analysis will now help us to analyze these multivariate and nonlinear relationship that may exist between plant variables like its growth parameters and other environmental variables like soil properties and other weather patterns and other things. And so in this video we are going to understand a bit about canonical correspondence analysis and how we can implement them using simple data sets as well as uh, what are the libraries available to do canonical correspondence analysis. And so canonical correspondence analysis uh, in ecology is very commonly used to understand a complex relationship between biological variables of a plant such as the flowering time, plant growth, leaf area index, chlorophyll content, root growth and other parameters that are actually related to the plant or a group of plant with the environmental variables like wind speed, sunlight exposure, soil moisture and other things. So in a specific ecosystem, let's say we are dealing with a forest, a particular forest, the environmental variables like the soil moisture, soil temperature and other uh, parameters, which I have highlighted here in the red color in the right hand side, will affect the plant growth related variables that are highlighted in the blue color on the left hand side. And so while we can examine like the relationship through a simple pair by pair correlation. Let's say we can check if the flowering time is correlated with wind speed or if the plant growth is correlated with soil moisture, we can get some correlations um, like uh, plant growth can be correlated with soil moisture and this method actually only provides a partial picture because it can only compare two variables at a time. And suppose we want to understand how multiple environmental factors collectively influence the plant growth. For example, during different seasons, uh, how different environmental factors will affect the plant growth or plant health. The canonical correspondence analysis will now allow us to explore these multivariate relationships by considering all environmental variables simultaneously. And this method can actually tell us, for instance, how the combined effect of uh, increased soil moisture and decreased sunlight exposure during a rainy season will affect the growth patterns. So we can know the combined effect. Simultaneously, if the soil moisture is increasing and the sunlight is decreasing, how this combination of uh, factors that the change in environmental variables will now affect the plant growth. And we can know such multivariate relationships through this canonical correspondence analysis. And to understand actually the canonical correspondence analysis, what we will do is we will group all the biological variables uh, into X, a vector X. Now X has X1 representing plant growth, X2 representing leaf area index and so on and so forth. 
and similarly we will group all the environmental variables into a vector y where y1 is soil moisture y2 is soil temperature and so on and so forth and now so with these vectors x and y we will now in the next slide define a new variables called as canonical variables that will actually help us understand these complex interactions so let's understand how this canonical correspondence analysis works using the ecological variables that we saw in the previous slide and so let's say that we have two sets of measurement first we have our environmental variables the y vector like we have the soil moisture soil temperature or sunlight exposure and others so let's just consider three of them for now and similarly we have our biological variables the x vector like we can have plant growth or the leaf area index and the chlorophyll content and among others so let's consider only three of this for the illustration what the canonical correspondence analysis does is really interesting it creates new variables called as canonical variates so we can think of these as special combinations where the new variables now u1 is a linear combinations of our x vector which is the soil moisture soil temperature and sunlight exposure with the coefficient a11 a12 and a13 and similarly we can define another variable namely the v vector which is again a linear combinations of our biological variables like plant growth leaf area index and chlorophyll content so now we have actually have a new uh, dimensions from x and y we have transformed into u and v which are then now the linear combinations of our earlier variables and now this uh, the coefficient a and b here are not just any random selections but actually they have they are carefully chosen such that they actually maximizes the correlation between u and v for instance uh, this means that the coefficient are selected in such a way that the u and v have the strongest possible relationship between our environmental and biological variables and so the choice of uh, uh, here a1 a11 a12 and a13 similarly b11 b12 and b13 such that u1 and v1 have the highest correlation not only that we also select this coefficient in a such a way that the variance of u1 and v1 is equal to 1 why we have to have such a constraint of making a variance as one is because imagine we choose some large coefficients we always have seen some uh, plots or while doing research we have always seen that if one point on the data has very large value it can actually change our correlation and we get a very high correlation value because of just one point and so to have a level playing field we have to compare with the similar entities and so if we set variance of u and variance of v vectors as one we are not only standardizing our measurements but also we are ensuring that each variable actually contributes proportionally to its importance and also we can compare the correlations meaningfully across different pairs so imagine like if we don't set it to variance as 1 we could just get correlation as high as 1 or 0.9 just by multiplying all the coefficient by a very large number and so with these criteria uh, when we have uh, u1 and v1 as the linear combinations of our earlier uh, variables we form the canonical variates and so similarly we can actually go to the second set of uh, variables u2 and v2 such that correlation between u2 and v2 is the second best correlation we can have between these two variables the other condition is that the u2 and v2 
the second canonical variate is completely uncorrelated with the first canonical variates. So u2 is uncorrelated with u1 and similarly v2 is completely uncorrelated with v1. So this is actually an independent pattern that we are finding with each canonical variates. So with u2 and v2 we perform similar, we compute similar coefficients such that the variance of u and v are 1 and the coefficients a and b are chosen such that it maximizes the correlation between u2 and v2 now. And so this second correlation, the second pair actually finds the next strongest correlation and it's also uncorrelated with the first canonical variates. And similarly, we can move to the next canonical pair, u3 and v3 and so on and so forth, which will be uncorrelated with all the previous pairs. And now like what this coefficient tells is, like for example, we have u1 equal to a11 times soil moisture plus a12 times soil temperature and a13 times soil exposure. So if a11 let's say it's a large number, it tells me that the soil moisture plays a very important role uh, in explaining the plant physiological response. So each coefficient essentially gives us the weight or importance of that variable in the overall relationship. And so in the canonical correspondence analysis, it's like we go on finding uh, like uh, the important patterns in our data like the first pair explains certain pattern and then after accounting for that relationship we then go for the next pair uh, after accounting for what we already found in the first pair. For example, the first pair, the first canonical variates here u1 and v1 can reveal us like how water and light availability affect our plant growth and photosynthesis. For example, these are the fundamental growth response and now after we have accounted for this like after we have accounted how water and light affects our plant growth through u1 and v1 we can now move on to the second pair u2 and v2 which for example can tell us how plants adapt to stress or seasonal changes maybe for example and similarly we can go to u3 and v3 which will now capture entirely different aspect of our ecological system or uh, the relationships uh, which is actually uncorrelated with all our previous pairs. So canonical correspondence analysis actually uh, like gives us a complete picture of how these multiple variables are actually connected like how ecological and biological variables are connected in a given ecosystem. And, uh, canonical correspondence analysis is a tool to actually understand or even untangle these complex relationships and actually understand what are the main patterns in our data that could be dependent on multiple variables like we saw in the simple example here. And so um, I found a Kaggle data set from Bangladesh. Uh, it had some agricultural data set and so I tried to actually perform canonical correlation analysis uh, using just a basic libraries like NumPy and uh, linear algebra library of SciPy. And so it had like uh, variables like uh, temperature, rainfall, and also some agricultural variables like fertility index, crop suitability, and land use type and so I did some grouping between environmental variables and agricultural variables like X and Y and then the results actually was rather disappointing that I could not find any strong correlations for example the first canonical correlations were like 0.21 and uh, second one was 0.16 and the third was around 0.1 and so these weak correlations uh, tell me that uh, the relationship between the environmental and agricultural variables in this particular data sets were not strongly linearly connected because uh, this is a assumption that we make that uh, the 
we form these canonical variables through linear combinations of our original variables. And so uh, sometimes the ecological data may be very complex and can be nonlinear. And so that's why we find uh, very weak correlations here. And so when we have that uh, weak correlation, it doesn't always mean there exists no relationship. It means that it could be very nonlinear or it could have some complex interactions, feedback loops. All these things uh, may need some different approaches. For instance, we can use nonlinear methods like uh, kernel based canonical correlation analysis or machine learning approaches like random forest or convoluted neural networks. These are good ways to actually capture uh, complex interactions that may not be captured by linear approaches. And also we could have, uh, if we have like seasonal patterns, we could also do some time series analysis. And so uh, it's just a practical example of how we can implement canonical correspondence analysis. I will share this notebook in the description. Although the results that we get is disappointing, but we can find some other data set to work with a similar approach to actually implement canonical correspondence analysis in Python. So having seen the Kaggle dataset uh, and the code how we can do the canonical correspondence analysis uh, using NumPy, uh, we will see some of the research papers how this technique has been useful for uh, ecological dataset. So here I am showing a paper from 1987. It's a classic paper where actually they studied vegetation using canonical correspondence analysis. So they had data on different plant species and environmental conditions like soil moisture and how much the meadows were fertilized and the canonical correspondence analysis actually helped them to visualize which environmental factors were most important for different plant types. They also used uh, this analysis in a clever way to track how vegetation changes when land rises from the sea showing that plants were adapting to these changes over time. So similarly in a very recent paper in 2021 paper, uh, the authors they used the canonical correspondence analysis to actually understand how soil conditions favor different types of bacteria in cauliflower fields and so using canonical correspondence analysis they could actually analyze the relationship between soil elements like uh, the micro minerals like aluminium, iron, magnesium and the different species of bacteria and actually they found a very strong relationship uh, like having a correlation of 83 percent showing that how soil chemistry influences uh, what kind of bacteria growth and so uh, they could actually find certain bacteria species preferred calcium rich areas while others prefer phosphorus rich areas and so this is an example of how this analysis helps scientists to understand complex relationship in agriculture uh, in case uh, farmers want to know what kind of soil conditions will support beneficial bacteria for their crops. And so I think uh, there are a lot of other papers that you can find uh, if you kn want to know about canonical correspondence analysis, how it has been used in ecological research. And I think we have come to the end of this video. I hope you had some idea of canonical correspondence analysis. And this is again a vast topic. And so I will come back with similar video. Till then keep learning, enjoy life. Thank you.